Hi, I'm James Bush, INTA's Chief Knowledge Officer. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about geographical indications. I think GIs are a topic that most people who work with trademarks and brands know a lot about, uh, but it may not be something that they do every day in their business. So today I'm here with Kerry Johnston and Lorenzo Lita, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about GIs and, and related IP rights. So I think that wines are one of the products that actually comes to mind first when, when you're thinking about GIs. But uh, what exactly is a geographical indication? There's a revision proposed for the Lisbon Agreement to extend GIs to include um, other agricultural products. And in fact, right now, the European Union is looking at extending uh, geographical indications to include non-agricultural products. So Nowadays, in 2015, the concept of GI is so broad. And uh, Kerry introduced the fact that traditionally GIs are considered only for agricultural products, but now GIs are extended also to non-agricultural products. And the fact that uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, discussion about it uh, and uh, that many people are starting to open the word of GIs to geographical indicators instead of only geographical indications, it's a big step in this direction. I can think of some examples of, of agricultural GIs, like, like wine or tea or things like that. Or the Idaho potato. Or the Idaho potato. Yes. Um, but I'm, I'm having a little trouble thinking of a non-agricultural GI. What would be an example of that? Well, historically, if you look on the World Intellectual Property Office's site, you might see some references. Uh, for example, in Iran, they are referring to rugs, or you could include porcelain. There are hats that are made in certain parts of Asia that um, are considered GI. So it's extending beyond simply the agricultural products that we typically know of, for example, uh, different types of cheeses, yogurt, uh, Greek yogurt, feta cheese, etc. It's, it's actually an expanding area. Why should a brand owner care about this? There are so many conflicts arising between uh, trademarks uh, and GIs because uh, it's different uh, their starting point of view between trademark owners and GI owners. Because when you own a GI, you think that this name, that it's indicating something, has to be protected uh, against any kind of use. Meanwhile, trademark owners believe that the first to use is the one that is entitled to do it. And of course, uh, there are a lot of fights that are arising, in particular for non-agricultural GIs, but also for agricultural GIs in such countries where uh, the GI culture is not so, let's say, strong or not uh, so important uh, in the history of the country, like it happens in many European countries like Italy or France or or also in Africa, for instance? I think the other issue is for trademark owners who have pre-existing registered rights, and we now are seeing um, situations where GIs are being recognized and it's resulting in clawback to the existing registered rights. So um, I think from a trademark owner's perspective, one of the issues is just simply the idea that they have this private right that they've worked hard to register and that they've gained a reputation in and the possibility that they might lose that right. From a positive perspective, there are also examples where GI brands and trademark owners have entered into agreements and, and both have benefited from an association with each other. It's the issue that there, there should be some harmonization and regulation of GIs, mm -hmm. 100%. Right at, at the moment, it doesn't seem like there's a, any kind of international harmonization around that issue, and there should be. France and Italy are, are you know, have particularly robust systems, whereas other countries may not. What are some of the practical differences? So for example, I believe there's 15 sui generis GI systems existing right now in the EU, mm -hmm. which means quite a few of the countries are not included in that system. Right. So um, that's a problem in terms of certain uh, producers getting better protection than other producers in, in other countries. So. And for instance, in Italy, there are some regulations in order to protect uh, non-agricultural GIs like ceramics uh, and porcelain, uh, as uh, Kerry was mentioning, that it's an industry that is very important in, the, in Italy, and therefore the government is struggling in order to protect them. There's been an international stalemate. Unfortunately, the governments haven't been able to get together. And as a result, the EU uh, DG Trade had approached the issue by um, negotiating 
uh, numerous bilateral trade agreements, which sounds like a great idea, but ultimately it's always uh, preferable for trademark owners if we can get some uh, harmonization internationally because we are involved in international trade. Well, thank you, Carrie and Lorenzo. Thank you. And we hope it all roads lead to Rome in December yes. of 2015. Great. <laughs> <Grazie>. <laughs>